Welcome everyone, it's me Nina from Yoga Waking Africa and I am delighted to be chatting with Juanita. Many of you may recognize Juanita because you used to be helping me out with Yoga Awakening Africa and now you are kind of like full-time in your brand which is Heartworks with Juanita and kind of like I suppose our paths crossed with like yoga and the yoga world and kind of like I drifted off more into the Ayurveda and coaching side of things and you have drifted more in towards like the energy healing and intuitive mm. space so welcome mm. how are you and you want to give everyone like a little bit of a rundown like how your yoga transitioned or if it has even transitioned into yeah. the work you're doing now, I think that might be really yeah. exciting to to start. Oh. With. Yeah, well, thanks so much, Nina, and thank you for inviting me to be on this interview. It's awesome, and it's great to reconnect. So yes, my name is Juanita. My brand is Heartworks with Juanita, and my journey literally started with yoga first just loving yoga doing yoga for myself then being invited to become a teacher and I was like oh okay did the trainings did a couple of trainings became a yoga teacher as I worked part-time as well and then realized I don't want to be in the corporate world anymore so I did the half teaching yoga half corporate for a while and then went into full-time yoga teaching from I'd say 2015 but I have I've been teaching for like 17 years so started teaching in 2006 um and yeah it was it was everything took up all my energy you know like yeah I'm teaching like 12 12 classes in five days I loved it traveling all over and then um, when I say traveling all over, all over Cape Town, privates, corporates, groups, and then COVID arrived, mm -hmm. and we all know how that went. <laughs> yeah, kind of. and you know, and we're like, wow! So you go from teaching live to teaching online. Like you can't do that with yoga because you don't know. You know, like you need to be in, in with people. And I think like many people, it completely rocked my world. And um, I, I, I was literally left with nothing, like absolutely nothing. So it was one of the, uh, probably the biggest dark night of the soul that started. Yeah, it was like, everything was taken from me I lost everything and I was completely completely bankrupt and in debt and I was like how do I recover from this because my whole life has been yoga teaching and now everyone's teaching online and then it was well that's what you have to do so do that but then you know you're competing with free yoga on YouTube yeah <laughs> that people and there's after two, three months and, and there's it. plenty and then after two months when people or maybe, probably two months of people supporting you and the third month and they're like okay this lockdown's taking a bit longer than we thought I'm just going to tighten my pockets a bit and mm -hmm. I'm just going to go on YouTube and and I just like I knew I, I kind of have a sense you know so so it just became even worse, you know, it was like hanging on to those little strings of classes, which wasn't much, and it, it really wasn't the same. So I had to dig deep to like, where, how do I come back from this? Mm. You know, and who knows when, not, how long this is going to last. And interestingly enough, together with yoga I've always been interested in the energy body which is the chakras always 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 so I say chakras energy centers the electromagnetic field but always about you know so intrigued not just the color and the mandalas and the symbol but what do they mean you know what energy do they hold the sounds the symbols like um how's it connected to your physical body but I did a lot of self-study but I was always fascinated there was something and I was like, I don't know yet, 
but I'm always so intrigued by the chakras. Mm. So during COVID, I was exploring more. And one of the things that came up was, you know what, I've always been interested in energy healing and shamanism, shamanic energy healing. So I looked at courses online with some of the most renowned um, energy healers in the world, like Dr. Alberto Vilaldo, who is um, an anthropologist, medical anthropologist, and he studied for over 25 years with the uh, medicine people in the jungle, healed himself with their assistance. And he teaches energy healing together with um, modern nutrition, you know, so really combining the two worlds. And I was like, this is my ultimate dream to be an energy healer. I, and at that point, I was like, I don't know what that looks like. I don't even know what an energy healer does. I just know I want to be one. It was just this intuitive something. I even applied and I was just like, you know, when you're grasping at straws in COVID. And then I got COVID in 2021. Um, I'm trying to think, beginning of 21, and it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. Um, I got it quite bad for two weeks. And at one point, I was just like, when I thought I would go to hospital, which was something I was fighting. I was like, no, this is not the end. Like, I've got way too much. I've got way too much I want to do. Um, and in that time, a friend contacted me and said, when you get better, I'd like to do energy healing on you. And um, our beloved friend, Annika. So I said, yes, that would be great. I'd love it. When I was better, I had about two or three sessions with her. I didn't even open my eyes to know what she was doing. I just was loving and loving was brilliant I asked her about the course I said send me the information as I read it I'm like my heart was just pounding like everything was oh my gosh this is it this is it and that's when I think when the miracles really started happening of trusting in energy mm. because here I'm sitting at this course and I'm going great I've got no money, lost everything, I'm still in COVID, and I want to do this two-year course. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to apply. Apply in a way that Juanita does not, you know, I'm always quite, you know, um, professional and just, you know, I don't know, just try and sort of skirt around the issue and I was like hi this is my name this is what I love doing come across your course this is where I'm at in my life right now and I know this is absolutely audacious of me and bold but I'm just putting it out in the universe and letting go of the outcome I want to do this course this is my financial situation and I'm open to you I'll welcome any decision Got a reply within half an hour. The director will meet with you. And an hour later, I had an email. The next day, I had a interview, and she said, "Welcome to the course." And I was like, "Great!" And that started my journey. I still didn't know what it looked like. Started the first day of training, um, because when I say my love of energy and intuition, in that whole previous year of working with where do I go from here how do I pick up the pieces I don't know what to do and I realize I can't control this outcome mm. I, I, I have no control I don't know what to do and I did a lot of meditation and in the meditation I got a lot of messages and downloads that were like this is so um this is so real. It's like you know when you know that you just know that you can't explain it because you don't have proof. One of the things I got was you're going to work with your hands. Okay. And then it's not Reiki. It was not this. It was not that. I was like, okay, fine. And then literally about eight months later, first day of the training, chat, chat, chat about this and that. We're going to demonstrate how you do energy 
And there was the demonstration on the on the chakras. And in that moment, it was like, like I literally felt this energy going, this is how you can use your hands. And I just knew like this, this is it. Mm -hmm. Um and it was just the most profound two years of my life. And what I realized, if anything, was even if I had chosen not to be an energy healer, it is the best for me. So I speak for myself, so everyone's different. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to do some inner work, that was, that was it. That was it. So hitting your triggers, hitting the shadows, hitting like the deep pain and wounds and you're just in it you are in it you know um, and then you're given the tools so you're not just given the tools for this is if you do energy healing you know you're given the tools for yourself because then I realized this is how energy healing like on a practical level I understood it you know I understood the chakras I understood the information I understood all of this is the root cause because you have been dealt with. But I, on a practical level, how do you how do you practice that mm. on someone? Mm. You know, and not not in a coaching sense. So then mm. it's like, oh my gosh, it's like just came together. But the beauty about that is it really helps you to you can heal yourself. Like, what tools can I use to heal myself? Besides somatic tools like yoga, because yoga is a beautiful um, somatic therapy for healing trauma and for moving energy through your body, and it mm -hmm. works on all chakras. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've, we've, I've got the, the practical, you know, the somatic, besides other things out there. But now, energetically, emotionally, mentally, it's like, wow, can we really tap in here to mm -hmm. my own stuff? to my own stuff and the beauty about that is as it unfolded is you realize the only way you can truly guide someone with their own healing is if you've been through it yourself you know and then you're like I feel this in my, I feel this you know I you don't just it cognitively it. get it you don't sense it in your body you get it on all levels the energy on all levels yeah. that we talk about in yoga yeah yeah, all all levels because then you're like, I, I, I actually know what this person is going through. Mm. You know, I do know. Then maybe the example might be the same, but the the wound, whether it's um, unmet need to be loved or not worthy or um, sexual trauma or whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, if the root cause is always. Like, I know what that feels like, you know, mm. or not feeling safe, you know, and then you go, oh my gosh, no wonder I have that oh. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, yeah, because you know, it's, you know, there's something more than, okay, well, you've got a slip disc or something's like, well, you don't have a slip disc. Your, everything is fine. Go for x rays, you've got to, nothing wrong with you. Every time I into a doctor, there's nothing wrong with you. And intuitively, it's like, I know. Like, just, it just doesn't sit with me. Mm. But the doctors would say, there's nothing wrong with you. Blood tests, MRIs, uh, x-rays. And in my being, I was like, there's, there's something. There is something. And it's not like, oh, is it psychosomatic? Like, no, I'm not making myself sick because... Uh, and I'm saying, like, deliberately, like, but I want to self-sabotage myself, so I'll make myself sick. Mm. I actually, this is what I fear the most, so why is this happening? And then the energy work is go to your fear, go to the root cause. And then you understand, oh, right, not feeling safe physically, mentally, emotionally. And then it all makes sense why COVID is like, I don't feel safe financially. So, well, you know, that, that being taken away from me isn't what created the wound. 
that's just another that's just another um, circumstance, another example that's actually triggering the wing. Like, where did it start? Like, actually, I haven't felt financially safe for how many years? How many, you know, so it just was like it just really the the, the whole energy healing and work just goes deep. It just digs deep. And through all that digging, what it does is it sheds light on the truth. Yeah. And for me, it was like, that's it. That's it. An amazing, amazing, amazing story, um, Juanita. And there's so much in there that I'd love to unpack. I think where I want to start is this idea that, like, what, what got my, what piqued my interest is that the course is, wasn't just like a quick 12 week, three month course. Like it's a two, like it's a commitment. You've got to decide that, um, or you had to decide that you were going to commit to this for like two years. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this is where like a lot of trainings now are trying to do the quick fixes. Like, you know, mm -hmm. let's do a quick little yoga posture or quick breathing practice. And all of those are great, but they're not actually going to get to the root cause, like you were saying, because they may relieve temporary strain and relief from whatever it is that you've got. But you've actually, like you're saying, you've got to take the time, you've got to give yourself, and I'm sure, like, like, it's not going to just be those two years that you've been training, like now you know that it's ongoing, and you keep working at it. But you did have to commit for that longer period of time to say, listen, I'm really going to commit to looking at and taking all those layers and peel all those layers of the onion so that I can really get to the mm -hmm. deep, deep roots um, of that. Do you want to speak to that a mm -hmm. little with regard to like people needing to, like whatever course they're going to do, but really take the time to research. And like you're saying, like get that intuitive hit of like someone who you're wanting to work with and don't go for those quick mm -hmm. fixes, like re like, the longer the course, probably the better, because you're really going to commit yourself to it. Anyway, I could go on and on because I'm such a super <laughs> in that, but I'd love your thoughts. Maybe you completely disagree with me, but I don't think so. <laughs> no, I actually don't disagree with you. It would have been funny if I had gone, um, actually, no, no, but um, <laughs> that would have been an interesting discussion. But yeah, it would have been, and I'm totally open to that, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> um, I think it depends on what it is, you know, like, oh, do a one-month course, but when I, I say that because if it comes to healing like your own healing and you want to be take responsibility to guide other people through their healing and be serious about it then a one month course I would say no and I would say it's your decision because we've been given the greatest gift of all of free will it's your choice but what I would ask you is What's your intention to do a one month course yes. of energy? What's your intention? Oh, to help people. Okay, but why do you want to help people? To heal their trauma. Okay, why do you want to help them heal their trauma? Uh, because there's too much trauma. Okay, but what's your reason? Oh, no, because I've been through trauma. Okay, have you healed your trauma? Well, I'm, you know, so I'm like, I'll go, I'll keep going. Why, what's your intention? Mm. Because for me, it's if you want a quick course so that you can suddenly start teaching what, um, you know, because I've been through it, so I want to teach them. It's like, I would say with all due respect and absolute love in my heart, what are you bypassing? <laughs> 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 because what I want to say is, and I loved, it, loved as I, as you were saying, I was like, I'm going to tell you this, this um, saying, and then you spoke about the layers and the onion. When it comes to your healing, your own healing, and therefore guiding somebody through days, is this beautiful saying which touches my heart deeply. If the pain is deep, you will have to let it go many times. Mm -hmm. Hmm. so if it's like oh why you know I've dealt with this before why does this keep coming up dealt with this before and I've been family constellation and I've gone for a reading and I've 
uh, I've been going to a therapist for six years. Great. You know, but why does this keep coming up? Well, you can't go straight to the root cause right there and then overnight. You can try. You can try. But more than not, especially if it's a very serious trauma that's created these dysfunctional coping mechanisms and bypassing what you need to heal. If you go straight to the root cause and not start at layer by layer, it could potentially lead to an emotional or psychological collapse. Mm. Or you could go, oh my gosh, that's the reason. Now I know what it is. Heal, great. Life is grand for six months or a year or and then suddenly start crashing again. Mm. You start like those shadows come up and it's almost like it grips you more because it's like your soul's going, I mean, we need to go back. Yeah. We need to go back because all those other layers of bite, it was too much like you, you know, and, and that, that will happen. Yeah. So you can either go the short route or the long route. But if you go the short route, you will have to go back and backtrack and start again, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so is it really worth it? And if you are truly committed to your own personal healing journey and truly committed to helping other people, that comes from a place of love and connection with energy, connection to universal source healing, life force energy, then and not ego. Yes. Then you will devote yourself to that commitment, whether it's a year, two years, a year and a half whatever it is mm -hmm. because can you really give a timeline to your healing journey it's a lifelong journey process yeah there's always yeah. there's always something and it's kind of like what you're speaking what speaking about or kind of like what comes to mind it's kind of like whatever the trauma is and like you're saying you know you always get drawn back to it but every time you get drawn back to it and you look at it it's like it becomes less intense and it's like that intensity is of the energy is what you're slowly starting to release. And that's what I, that was so beautiful about the quote. And that's kind of like where my brain went straight away. It was like, yes, mm. we're going to keep being drawn into it, but we can probably face it or address it with a lot more compassion towards ourselves or the situation that happened mm. instead of this fighting or coming from like that ego space I think that's us that we so often do come from like it mm. wasn't my fault because of you know x y and z and actually you know step back and be like okay well I did have a part to play in it in in mm. whatever shape way or form um so yeah. so yeah no absolutely absolutely and it's to take um you know responsibility so when we bypass our shadows <laughs> or when we bypass like really looking at this layer and the next layer bypass because oh, it's uncomfortable or it's bad um you know kind of where was I going with this to pinpoint um let, let me backtrack a bit I'm going to go to to energy mm. is um Energy is about emotion, right? This emotion is energy and motion. So what kind of state of energy are you in? Are you in the state of energy where you are in denial? Where, you, where you're saying, well, I am healing um, because I'm going to yoga. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Then when a family member or a colleague or something triggers you, you react in the same way that you did five years ago, two years ago, one year ago, da, da, da. So, so it's the people or you, you're not responding to, um, you're responding or they're responding, sorry, to your energy mm. and you're responding to energy. But mm. the energy is actually what's trapped inside that you haven't dealt with, that you are bypassing, mm. Mm. right? So, example, this energy healing looks at, as we said, the root cause. And the root cause is what's blocked in your energy body. 
because everything starts as energy and mm -hmm. then manifests through the layers, like you said, manifests in the physical body. Always. Because we're living in we're living in two worlds. You know, um, if people say, oh, my soul and my physical body, those are two worlds. Your soul is incarnated in your physical body. So your soul is the quantum field, the energy field, the chakras, the electromagnetic field, where everything and anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And your body is light energy repackaged as matter. So everything shows up as energy first. And when we don't look at our um, trauma, things that make are, are painful, and we just suppress them, deny them, reject them, eventually that energy can't move that energy is supposed to move it yeah. has to move mm -hmm. and eventually it's like this water becomes solid becomes solid and it just becomes this block in your it starts moving through the layers or in your root chakra or solar plex whatever and it manifests physically what does it manifest as a dis-ease a body not at ease right so we go, why do I always have low back pain? Why do I always have financial problems? And like you said, we can blame this, that, that, or the next thing. Um, but actually, it started energetically. Mm -hmm. And when we blame something, we are bypassing. We do not want to look at, like you said, where am I responsible in this? So instead of being responsible, you react, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't respond to this energy inside that's like screaming like I can't do this anymore and so because you're not looking at it I'm going to I'm going to show up in a physical way that's mm -hmm. going to be uncomfortable because the physical body expresses itself through emotion yeah. And it kind of brings up this concept now that you're speaking of like learning because we can learn a whole load of modalities or practices, yoga, sequences, poses. Um, we can learn mantras and we can, like you are saying at the beginning, like you can learn about the chakras, and nah, nah, nah. but until you actually embody it and change your reaction to something that's happening in life, like you're talking about, like a relationship or whatnot, if you keep reacting the same way, to a certain situation and you've got all these tools you actually haven't learned anything because mm -hmm. you haven't changed the way you relate to the situation so you can have all this knowledge and all this wisdom and still be dumb as shit because you haven't done anything <laughs> excuse my no, I, I, I could not agree with you more I okay not agree with <laughs> We're on the I same would phone. like <laughs> I would like to um go back to a sentence you said and um only because this 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 feels right for me like you said you can have all the knowledge and the wisdom in the world right and you can have all the tools and like good for you that's amazing and you can help people however this is what i love about energy is all the knowledge comes from here the mind, the thinking mind, the analogical mind, the ego mind, right? And knowledge is great. Knowledge not gets you this, gets you that. Knowledge helps you to control things, right? But you can have all those tools and all that knowledge. It does not mean you have the experience. Yes. The two are not the same. The two are not the same. So knowledge comes from the mental mind of taking in all that theory, taking in and reading all those books and understanding it. Yes, I don't understand it. So have you put it into practice? And the way you put it into practice is you have to experience it yourself. And so when I come back to it, I wanted to go to the sentence you said, knowledge and wisdom. For me, knowledge and wisdom are not the same. Knowledge is what you learn in the books and the, the, the. wisdom comes from experience. Mm wisdom comes from oh, i've experienced it so i can embody it and i intrinsically understand now yeah i understand this knowledge and when you have knowledge and experience coming together 
that's coherence. That's really coherence and working energetically so profoundly um, in your favor when you're healing, you know, on whatever level it is, whatever level it is, whether it's it, it doesn't matter what aspect, it's, it's coming down to the fundamentals, healing you from inside. It's like, I want to heal my money problems. Great. Let's go inside. Yeah, yeah. No. And that's where I just, I just love that it's, you know, like you were saying, like you decided to commit like two years towards going on this journey, on this process. I just keep mm. coming back to it because I don't know why. It's obviously something that... <laughs> but I think that's like you're saying, that's, so you, you're able to learn... And then experience at the same time, you know, as you're going through the course, through the process, maybe because my course was also two years. And I really feel like that mm. was like, and it's still ongoing. And I think that really mm. is the minimum we we really need, you know, to embody, like you're saying, what we're learning, to have that wisdom. So yours mm. is definitely obviously because we're chatting about energy and that side like mine was a lot about like ayurvedic practices and just this i mean to keep it very practical and simple like you know what is it like to have an earlier lighter dinner what is it like to be in bed and asleep by 10 o'clock because yes we can all know that it's great to be in bed by 10 o'clock and i can teach it and tell it but until i'm actually in bed myself and sleeping at that time every night mm. i haven't embodied i haven't learned that and i don't know energetically you know how that you know to experience that in my body and I think that mm. um kind of like what you're saying with regards to again embodiment and wisdom like yes knowledge is definitely in the head and it's fantastic and it's great mm. and it helps us understand concepts and maybe even teach things mm. but it is that wisdom that embodiment that is so profound so mm. Kind of like to wrap things up or move towards the end it's like how as yoga teachers do we start embarking on this energy healing or energy journey like where's a good place to start like for someone who's not quite ready to commit to two years to doing something because they're not quite sure like where's like a good part to tip your toe into to kind of like get a feel for like what you're talking about mm. so what comes to mind for me as a yoga teacher if they want to experience this is go have an energy healing session and try out a few different practitioners um i also just on a side note energy healing encompasses a variety of things um, so there's kinesiology, there's Reiki, uh, acupuncture, but kinesiology, Reiki sort of fall under energy healing. And the energy healing I do sort of encompasses um, being the guide to channel whatever you want to call it, universal love and light to serve the person's highest good, highest healing, highest truth, highest protection. And then you're just the channel. Um, and that can be to their, um, to their energy centers, their aura, you can do soul retrieval, ancestral healing. So, so that's the energy healing I, I focus on covering a few other things. Um, so I would say if I'm talking about this particular modality, um, try out a few practitioners. If you've never tried kinesiology, try kinesiology. If you've never tried Reiki, try to break you. Be the one who's on the receiving end mm -hmm. and then feel like what resonates for me. Actually, that modality resonated for me, like the Reiki or the kinesiology or the energy healing session, you know, um, as described by myself, any other practitioner doing that. And see, because everyone will resonate with something different, right? Just like yoga, somebody will go, no, I'm an Ashtangi, and another person will go, give me yin yoga any day. <laughs> you know, so it's the same, it's the same thing, same thing. And it's not about, oh, but they're doing that. Yeah, but try it. What does your body resonate with? What does your energy resonate with? Because maybe something emotionally needs that modality over that modality. So or that practitioner it. over that practitioner exactly exactly so maybe have two sessions try different absolutely so i would say that first experience it 
feel it and see how it resonates for you. And, and it's also like, don't have a session and go, oh, she spoke about this and that. I'm going to now teach that in my next yoga class. Like, why don't you sit with that and really look at that? Mm -hmm. Really look at that. What was the guidance? What was the information? Journal it. Meditate on it. Go for a walk on it. Because that means first work on it within yourself. And then when you move through the layers, like, oh, wow, okay, now it's integrated. Mm. Now that's, that's the lovely now. word, the, the, the word of integrate. Um, yeah. That's so and important. then if you want to bring in something like I heard, you know, um, I was shown this and I want to bring it into my class, like maybe just tap into your emotions today. You know what I'm saying? So something like that. Um, but experience it first. And through that journey, however many sessions, and then okay, maybe I'll do a a part-time course or whatever, whatever. If you want to really incorporate it as a yoga teacher or um or as a separate thing and just use yoga as a somatic thing, is which the energy healing will help you with. Always be true to yourself. Always be true to yourself. So no matter what you're feeling and how you're feeling, do not betray yourself by going, I can't show up like this. Like, just be yourself and just own it. So that is that is key because if you're going to bypass your truth by expressing a different truth to how you're feeling and how you actually want to show up, it's just going to take that much longer. So even as a yoga teacher, don't teach because so I can get more clients because that style gets more yoga students because in your heart you want to you want to teach yoga that speaks to the emotional body you want to teach yoga that opens up your emotions you want to teach yoga that goes you're going to go slow today you want to teach yoga that makes you feel like oh my god my body like sure all it's layers of my body have had you know? a... and you're like i don't really want to worry about oh my gosh she's going to if that's how you want to teach, then be true to yourself because people will respond to that. They will respond to that. And you know why they'll respond to that? Because their energy is going, I need this. Mm -hmm. I actually need this. But their mind is going, I oh, want it. You know. mm, yeah. So, so I've got a question yeah. for you. One last question for you then quickly. Mm. It's like, how do you incorporate the energy healing your energy work using your intuition in your yoga classes if you're actually still teaching yoga at the moment or when you do teach like how have you brought the one into the other or do you keep them very separate like how what 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 so, is your uh, yeah, um, way of operating uh, so they are quite separate because they work differently However, I bring in the intuition of tapping into the energy of I can feel there's resistance or I can feel there's exhaustion or I can feel, um, I, I sort of can tap into the energy of the, the people, you know, and I, I am sort of going, they want this to go faster, but I know that their body needs to go slower. But at the same time, respecting sort of that middle ground, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But without compromising myself, like I'll actually give them the class that they want. Do you know what I mean? So I tap into that and then I bring in more of the language of, um, besides instruction, I bring in more of the language of tap into what does your body want and not what your mind wants. Mm -hmm. And I keep going back to tapping to how does your body feel? Does your body feel like it can hold it for another minute? Does your body feel like it needs to let go and stop it? Listen. 
even if I'm holding the pose for longer. You know, so it's tapping into like tap into the wisdom and intuition of your body. And let's go with that. So I'm sort of incorporating that kind of energy language into my teaching. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And and I do and I do bring in the energy centers, but speaking more of it in a especially if someone's not familiar with that work more of on a scientific level so uh, i'll call them all the energy centers and i will say more on a physical they're situated in your endocrine system because then people go oh because if you go straight in maybe with new yoga people or who are new to your teaching and they're new to their own healing it's like woo woo but it's actually not because this is like being proven through neuroscience like this is what's creating problems, you know. You say so you can talk about the neuroplexus, you can talk about the thymus gland, and then people sort of oh, it's almost like they need that scientific, anatomical, physiological language to validate that oh, this this is actually um, not really, this mm -hmm. is actually serving, you know. So so to bring both those those wor wor uh, worlds in to the teaching I find is also quite helpful awesome love it love it love it love it thank you thank you thank you so much for taking the time and finally we're getting the chance to connect and chat <laughs> way 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 too long so thank you for it being has. here and um, I'm sure we'll catch up again sometime soon yes yeah I look forward to it thank you so much and I wish you all the best with your um online coaching and all the fans for the year uh, yeah thank you again Hello.